Sure, thank you, Megan. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Good evening, everyone. Uh, for everyone joining us for the, the first time for our, our Peachtree Shared Space Workshop number two, welcome. And, and for anybody that has joined us for any of our events reaching back to uh, um, the Bell Street Virtual Tour on Friday, welcome back. Uh, my name is Kevin Bacon. I am the Director of Design for the City of Atlanta, Department of City Planning. Um, we're excited to bring you the concluding night of our uh, workshop number two, um, our community open studio where we'll be talking uh, about the design uh, refinements and development for the shared space design on Peachtree itself. Uh, we'll to go to the agenda here. Um, obviously, we're starting with the welcome introduction tonight. Um, we're going to spend some time um, after that, uh, after I'm done talking, um, taking you through some of the existing conditions analysis, some of the things that we've learned by studying Peachtree in downtown. Uh, we'll talk about draft vision goals and design considerations, a lot of the things that we heard from, from everybody in, in workshop number one and in a lot of the interviews and meetings that we've had in between. Um, and then we'll talk about the shared space design and then we'll get back together and, and talk about next steps. Um, for anybody joining us for the first time, um, what we're talking about is Peachtree Street. Not all of it, um, but a very specific segment of it in, in downtown from about Marietta Street to North Avenue, what we would consider, you know, the kind of the heart of downtown. And I think in a lot of the early comments and discussions, we had some agreement on that. Um, this really comes out of the Atlanta City Studios work back to starting in 2016, but, but um, really coming full on display to the public in 2018 after we spent a lot of time working on it um, and asking a question of, of how can we reimagine Peachtree Street as an exceptionally de designed place for all people every day. Um, you know, I think a lot of us that have lived here in Atlanta for a long time go out to Peachtree Street, we look around, it has the, the tall buildings, but it, it, it lacks something, um, you know, certainly when we're out there for the, the major events that we used to have, and hopefully we'll have back one day, the, the Dragon Cons, the Street Lives, other events, it, it, it has a vibrancy and a vitality and can work like our main street, but on any given day of, of the week, what, why, why compared to other um, main streets of, of other major cities, why is it lacking that life and that vibrancy and, and how through public space design can we, we set a better um, canvas for public life in downtown. The, the study for the studio really, you know, and looking at that, that stretch of Peachtree um, and thinking about it in different segments, you know, it, it, in, in that stretch of Peachtree, no, no two sections of it are exactly alike. We're, we're looking for something that, you know, would really benefit um, immediately from a public space improvement, knowing that different segments have different opportunities and challenge some. It's, it's infill development. Um, some it's, it's about crossing the, uh, the, the downtown connector. Um, so, you know, for us, the idea and, and, and the, the discussion focused on, you know, what about Peachtree Center, that there seemed to be this um, consumable space from about Hardy Ivy Park to Georgia Pacific Plaza um, that, that had the bones of, of a, a good main street in downtown and, and would benefit from an examination of, of a public space improvement. And we, we talked a lot about, you know, what we would do there. There was talk about adding bike lanes and then um, scooter lanes and, you know, how do you reconfigure for all of these users? And, you know, the concern there was obviously, do we start to stripe and segregate everything out to, to try to squeeze room for everybody? And, and then, you know, really started talking about moving between the blocks and the cross grain and, and really just creating a place for people. Um, we looked at a lot of examples of, of different streets that, that focused on streets for people, um, whether they're shared streets, shared spaces. We, we learned in our first workshop that there's, there's different terms and those mean different things. And there's some great examples, both internationally and, and here um, in the States that, that um, we looked at for the studio's original uh, study, as well as have continued to look at for this. Um, you see Argyle Street in Chicago, New Road in Brighton. Um, we, we spent a lot of time looking at Exhibition Road in London for a lot of the ideas that are in Peachtree Street, some of the civic identity moves. Um, and then you see Bell Street in the, the left-hand side there, which um, thanks to our, our project team, uh, we were able to take a virtual tour of that on, on, on Friday um, and, and have some good kind of taking a look at the street years later and, and lessons learned. And, and you know, even there, it's, it's not a perfect example for Peachtree. None of these are exactly alike. It's, it's what, what pieces of that do apply and what do we learn for Peachtree. Um, 
all of that coalesced into an idea that we had for Peachtree Street that is a radical transformation from what's out there today. Um, you, you see that, you know, like a, a true shared space, there is a removing of, of curbs and, and markings and, and certainly there's a place where, where vehicles would go and a um, uh, area where, where pedestrians could go. But, you know, it's really allowing that flexibility for both, you know, mobility as we know it today, but also allows flexibility for what it could be tomorrow. Um, and really starts to think about, you know, what are the spaces for people that could be in there? You see some ideas of alternating parking and, and programming and, and uh, even planting of trees. Um, and, and it was an idea. We even thought about materials. And, and so what this study is doing is, is taking that big idea and, and really refining that, understanding kind of the uh, feasibility aspects of it. What would happen to traffic if we really um, uh, took out uh, two lanes of peach tree as something like this is proposing? And, and what about the design didn't we think about in that, that first phase? Um, and really starting to build the engagement of that, you know, off that spark of an idea. So we're, we're excited that, that we have our, our team of, of consultants from, from tool design on board, uh, working with us at the city, um, Department of City Planning, Atlanta Department of Transportation, um, to really take this the next step further. Um, and so tonight that will be a big step in terms of, of looking at um, that next wave of design refinement. We left workshop one with some starter ideas. Those have been transformed. I would kind of point out to everybody tonight, this is an open studio. So what we're proposing tonight though, though really developed and, and um, you know, some beautiful looking graphics. It's not done, it's not the final thing. Um, this is here just like as designers in the studio, we, we put things up on the wall occasionally and really kind of see what sticks. We've been working on these together for the, the past several weeks and are eager to hear everybody's thoughts on this. What's working, what's not working? Is it too much space for cars, not enough for people? Those are the questions that we are looking forward to talking about tonight. So that is enough from me. I'm going to turn it over to Addy to talk a little bit more about the deliverables and, and where we're going next. So thank you all very much for coming back and, and spending the week with us and, and for one final night. So thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Um, again, my name is Addie Weber. I am the Atlanta Office Director for Tool Design, and you'll hear from several of my colleagues from Tool Design this evening, along with some of our partners on this effort. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about where we are in the process and our deliverables first. Um, this has been, uh, we have about five more months left in this official process. So the concepts you'll see tonight will be fed into our illustrative concept reports. Um, and that also will go into our GDOT draft concept report. The purpose of the draft uh, GDOT concept report is to really help position the city should they decide to pursue funding, um, state and federal funding. Um, the, the final deliverable, which you'll actually see in the ground is um, the demonstration project. Next slide, Megan. Um, and the demonstration project is upcoming. We're looking at an April, May timeframe for that effort, but you'll see we started back in August. Um, we've, we've almost concluded our existing conditions and technical analysis. We're just kind of putting the bow on that. Um, now we're in the alternatives analysis and conceptual design, refining the activation and programming strategy and moving forward to an implementation plan and final report. Um, the next step will be the hard stuff is the funding and implementation, but we feel like we're getting some great momentum with this effort um, so far, especially this week. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items. We have everybody muted. Um, so if there's a question in the chat, please don't hesitate to chat. And um, we will have two breakout groups this evening. So we'll be jumping back and forth and hope to get some real personalized um, feedback on some of the ideas that we have. And then finally, I'm going to turn it over to Megan McMullen, my colleague here with Tool Design, to speak to you about some of the existing conditions. So Megan. Thanks, Addie. All right, I see some familiar names and some new names in the group. Um, so I'm gonna try and make sure that we're all on the same page while also leaving plenty of time to talk about the design itself. Um, so I'll go through pretty briskly, but feel free to drop a question in the chat if I go a little bit too fast over something that you have questions about. So for the purpose of analysis and also for design, um, we've broken the corridor into four different segments that really have their own unique character. Um, so 
The first segment, um, as Kevin mentioned, it starts up at North Avenue and goes down to Pine Street. So you may be familiar with some landmarks in this area, like the Bank of America building, um, Emory University Hospital Midtown, or the Shakespeare Theater Group. Uh, this has the highest volume of existing uh, traffic, um, both because of some of those activity generators like the hospital and major office buildings, um, but also because this is close to access to the highway. And so we notice a lot of people um, who are on the corridor are actually heading off to the highway in this section. A little bit further south, um, segment two picks up at Pine Street and continues down to Porter Place, just north of SunTrust Plaza. Uh, the nickname for this one is the Connector Crossing um, because this part is really characterized um, by the highway, um, as well as by the many parking lots, um, which you can see are colored in light yellow um, here. Uh, there are also a number of driveways, which you can see with the red dots. Um, so a lot of potential in this area, but also um, not a ton of existing activity happening. Um, for those of you who may have been following the Stitch Project, um, which proposed putting a cap over part of the connector for new parks and new development, uh, this is the location where that project has previously been proposed. Segment three brings us a little bit further south and um, we pick up at Centrist Plaza, at Hardy Ivy Park and come into the Peachtree Center area. It has the highest level of intensity and density of activity with a lot of um, office towers, hotels um, and other things that keep a lot of people on the streets in this area. And there are a few smaller green spaces and plazas like Margaret Mitchell Square, the Georgia Pacific Plaza and the recently renovated plaza at Peachtree Center. Um, there's only a couple of driveways in this area, and those are located at the Hyatt Regency. Otherwise, we have a, a straight curb line all the way across, which is helpful um, when we're looking at how to redesign the, the space as a curbless design um, to not have too many driveways to tie into. And Megan, if you could zoom in sure. just a little bit so we can see some of the legend um, on there. Perfect. Oh, yep. Good I know point, you're Addie. doing a good job mm -hmm. explaining it, but just... So sure. Folks. Yeah. Um, so the legend down here, um, you can see the yellow is for parking lots. Um, the lighter green is for private plazas like Georgia Pacific. Um, and the darker green is for public parks um, like Margaret Mitchell Square. The lines that you see on the edge, that's looking at the type of use that's happening there. Um, so you can see some are active uses like retail. Um, some might be a hotel lobby. Others um, might be a surface parking lot. So it varies considerably throughout the corridor, um, but definitely this section has more active uses. Um, and when we say that, we mean um, it's a place that people will probably be going in and out throughout the day. So there is a public facing door. Um, it's, it's not closed to a private or specific group of people, but it's definitely something that's going to be creating more of a sense of vibrancy in the area. Uh, segment four is the furthest to the south, um, so that picks up at Margaret Mitchell Square and Forsyth Street um, and goes all the way down to Marietta Street. Uh, their character in this area changes a little bit from Peachtree Center to have a higher concentration of historic buildings, a little bit of a lower building scale, um, and a lot of smaller storefronts that are really um, facing onto the street. You can see a lot of solid red lines here, um, which are where those active storefront uses are happening. Um, and of course, Woodruff Park plays a big role in this area. Um, Georgia State University is more present in segment four than in any of the other areas with a number of their buildings sort of facing onto Woodruff Park and the student population playing a big role here. Uh, the, another important feature of the street is the streetcar, um, which picks up only in, in segment four um, and is along our corridor of Peachtree Street between Auburn Avenue and Ellis Street. So I'm gonna move into a few comments um, that we've gotten from people throughout the process and some of the key takeaways um, from the analysis. Um, one of those being when we look at those active uses that are happening along the corridor, only about a third of what, what could be a potentially active ground floor use actually is functioning in that way. Sometimes that's because there's a vacancy and other times it's because there is actually a, an active use happening behind the scenes, but um, they've been papered over or otherwise covered up so that we're not having that in and out interaction with people um, on a regular basis. We looked at the population um, specifically in the Peachtree Corridor uh, along just our project area. Of course, there are more residents and active users in downtown generally who will be coming back and forth at Peachtree Street. But when we look just at Peachtree Street, 
The daytime population is about eight times higher than the residential population of about 3,000 folks. So that's something that we definitely want to take into consideration when we're trying to make it more of an active environment at all times of day and every day of the week. Um, and so not having a ton of residents definitely contributes to less activity in the evenings and on weekends um, when the typical office or tourist populations may not, may not be as active. One of the key questions for any Atlanta project is what about the traffic? Um, so I wanna go ahead and answer a little bit about that ahead of time. Um, in the analysis of the current traffic patterns, one of the really interesting takeaways um, about this corridor is where people are actually coming off of Peachtree Street. So when we look at the entire segment from North Avenue down to Marietta Street, we're noticing that a lot of people who start their journey on Peachtree Street at North Avenue are actually turning um, off onto Linden Avenue, most likely to get to the highway access point there. And so about half of those drivers are actually exiting at Linden Avenue. So we have a lot fewer cars that are actually making it all the way south um, into Peachtree Center and then further down to Marietta Street. Similarly, for northbound traffic, we get a lot of people who are peeling off before they get to Ellis Street, um, likely also to head um, to interstate access there as well. So the center portion um, of the corridor doesn't have as many through trips um, or as much traffic in general. This map um, is a lot to read all at once. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll look at the legend first so that you can interpret it a little better. Um, basically, you can think of it as being on a scale from hot to cold. Um, so the red hot areas are the ones that have the highest volume of traffic. And then going down into the cooler colors, those are the ones that have the least volume of traffic. So this is looking at downtown in general. Um, you can see Peachtree Street is right here where my cursor is. It's yellow. It has a moderate amount of traffic in general. Um, it has less than 15,000 vehicles traveling along it throughout the course of a typical day. Um, and the heavier traffic in downtown, obviously we can see the highways in red are carrying a bulk of that traffic. Um, but for some of the surface streets, um, we're seeing parallel streets to Peachtree Street like Spring Street, Piedmont Avenue, and Cortland are carrying a higher volume of the traffic in this area. Um, when we look at the performance, not only like how many cars are there, but what kind of congestion are we seeing? Um, a typical metric uh, for that is something called the level of service, uh, which lets us know compared to the capacity of the street, the number of lanes that we have, um, how many people are trying to use it at a given time. And so kind of like a report card, it goes from A, total free flow traffic, no problems, um, all the way down to F of there's really a lot of congestion happening here. And it's kind of that stop and go condition uh, that we know tends to frustrate people. Um, so looking at the Peachtree Street corridor, um, almost the entire thing operates at a level A or B, which means it's pretty much free flow traffic most of the time. Um, but there is a portion between North Avenue and Linden Avenue, which during um, the morning and evening peaks, or as it's more commonly known, rush hour, um, so between 6 and 10 in the morning and 3 and 7 in the afternoon, it gets a little bit more congested, but to a level LOSC, which is still considered pretty acceptable. All right, moving away from some of the discussions of traffic, um, another comment that we got from a lot of folks was that a disproportionate number of businesses in this area um, are chains or brands that seem to be geared towards tourists. And so um, looking at having uh, businesses that are more intentionally serving neighborhood residents and that have more of a local Atlanta flavor. We also received a number of comments um, from people who found the existing space to be dull and uninspiring. Um, we heard a lot of folks who were interested in seeing more of um, bold, fresh colors, um, just something that felt a little bit more exciting um, and maybe even youthful um, compared to some of the, the beige that we tend to see in this area today. Um, just wanted to point out that we are aware there are a number of projects that are happening uh, within this study area, and we are keeping those in mind as far as how they will either physically integrate with our project or the other types of impacts that they may be having. So some of those are the STITCH project that I mentioned, planned expansions at Emory University Hospital, um, or things like the, plant, the currently underway um, curbside management study that's looking at downtown as a whole. So those will all be factored in.
Um, we are currently in the process of wrapping up the historical and environmental survey and um, completing um, a model that looks at what the impacts to traffic would be from this project. Um, so you can check back on our website, sharepeachtree.com in February um, for that report. All right, I know that was a lot of information all at once. Um, I'll peek at the chat and see if we had any important questions. I think we're good, Megan. I think I've been okay. keeping up with it. So awesome. if you want to go ahead to the values. Thank you for, for taking care of that. Absolutely. All right, so in addition to some of the things that we see on the ground right now, we also wanted to sort of start this discussion with what we've been hearing from people. Um, and so if you may have participated in our workshops in November, where we talked a bit about what the values were that people wanted to shape this project, and then in ongoing discussions that we've had with people in one-on-one -on -one interviews or discussions this week, we've heard some key themes that have been coming up. I'll say we haven't wordsmithed these yet, um, but these are just some of the ideas that we keep hearing from people. Our important values um, that when we think about the way Peachtree Street operates today and the way that we think it's important for it to operate in the future, that these would be guiding that process. So it needs to be something that's safe for all people, whether you're walking, biking, rolling, uh, driving, you should feel safe and comfortable. It should be equitable and inclusive um, of everyone who would wanna be in this space accessible and trying to eliminate as many barriers as possible, vibrant, sustainable, flexible. Um, it needs to be focusing on serving neighbors first and uh, tourists second. Um, so really trying to have that neighborhood priority. Um, and then it needs to be contact sensitive throughout the corridor, recognizing that the, the quality and the requirements for each part of Peachtree Street are going to be different and needed to be um, designed as such. All right, so with that little setup, I'll turn it over to Addie to share um, the direction that we're heading um, with the project so far. Great, thanks, Megan. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go over the, the vision, our draft goals um, and strategies and our design considerations. This is gonna be a lot to take in. I'm gonna move through it fairly quickly because I wanna get us to our breakout groups and we'll have about 15 minutes in our breakout groups so we can really start to dissect and kind of get your responses to some of these. So I'm going to go through them. And then again, we're going to leave the, the big group and head for breakout groups so we can get a more, little bit more personal feel of, of what's happening with some of these um, starter ideas for, for the vision, the goals, and the design considerations. So our initial vision for this effort is the Peachtree shared space will be an exceptional public space for all people every day, supporting the next chapter of downtown Atlanta as a vibrant, equitable, and joyful neighborhood. That's where we are today, and we're looking forward to your feedback in a few minutes. Megan, if you wanna go ahead and move through to the goals. And I will say, you know, we have had a series of public space working group meetings, and a lot of this builds off of the previous work that we've heard from during the first workshop um, back in, which seems like forever ago, November, um, comments from our Wikium app that was um, during that time as well. And then comments not only that have come in during this week as people have registered, but also just emails and discussions that we've had um, along the way. So that's where we're building from on these. We have eight goals. I'm just gonna read the goals um, and then we can dive down if needed on, this, on the supporting strategies. Um, just a note about the vision. We wanna kind of keep it simple, straightforward, but really kind of highlight and begin to, begin to frame these, these, these goals and strategies and take into account our vision. So the first goal is to design a space that feels authentically and memorably Atlanta. We've heard that loud and clear. Atlanta is not other places. Um, we need to make sure it's, it's very much Atlanta. We also wanna create a safe space that prioritizes walking, biking, and transit. This is a shift in the city of Atlanta to really think about how we put people first um, and putting the person first means looking at prioritizing walking, biking, and transit. We want to foster, showcase, attract thriving local businesses. Um, I believe it was um, John Mills who just pointed out uh, that Peachtree has one of the, at the intersection of uh, Andrew Young and Peachtree with the Hooters, Hard Rock, and then Weston. You're absolutely right. Those are valuable businesses, but how do we get some more of that local flavor um, into the streets? We also want to make all people feel invited, comfortable, and celebrated. This is one of the key goals that we have for this corridor. 
we want to enliven the street. I think one of the most, um, as Megan kind of highlighted, was the, the stakeholder meeting we had with Cristo Ray students. And they described the street as various shades of gray or beige, regardless. It was, it was, it was interesting to get um, younger students' perspective on that. And I think that we also heard that in other stakeholder um, meetings as well. But how do we enliven the street? Um, and how do we naturally encourage safe and slow driving? Um, there's some mechanisms that we can put in place through design that can really help enforce that without having the police enforcement there. But how does design really shape and um, encourage safe and slow driving? We want to support the functions of a healthy neighborhood. Downtown is a neighborhood. It's just like any other. And how do we begin to really support the functions to really grow that neighborhood? And how do we think about our surrounding streets? How do we retrofit surrounding streets as needed to transition smoothly into the shared space and manage traffic? Um, the great thing about Peachtree Street in downtown is you have a network. A lot of places I've worked in don't have this network and you have to create it from scratch, but our downtown is healthy. It's got a well-connected grid system and how do we leverage that to really help support and transform Peachtree Street. Now, those are a lot of goals, but I wanna talk about design considerations before we head into our, our breakout group. Like the goals, we have some key buckets and some more bullet points for those. The first um, thing that we want to talk about and consider in our design that we have begun pulling in are the design features. Um, this goes to everything from materiality. So what does the pavement, uh, or what does the street look like? Is it pavers, is it big pavers, small pavers? Where's the shared zone? Where's the pedestrian area? Um, what views are we preserving? We'll get to that in a minute. But there's some just general maintenance issues and design features that we want to make sure that we're reflecting in our design. Um, Throughout all this, we wanna make sure that this a shared space is safe and accessible. And so we wanna meet, really exceed ADA guidelines and remove unnecessary barriers for all. There's some great historic buildings and parks along the corridor. So we wanna make sure we highlight those views um, and not only highlight those existing views, but make sure that we have in some ways those Instagrammable moments. What can kind of pull you through the corridor once you wanting to look for more and more along the corridor as you go through there. Transit is definitely a consideration. We have um, MARTA bus that goes through here. We also have the streetcar. Um, so we wanna make sure we're respectful of the existing streetcar and the potential that it has and make sure that they're loading and unloading for operations of transit is still considered. And then the final two are accommodating accommodations for programming. Um, we've heard from a lot of folks throughout this about well, what, who's programming the space, who's maintaining it. And I think that goes to you know, creating a space, a shared space that's flexible and cohesive that can allow so many types of performances from a big um, performance to like the small busker on the street and, and pods that happen to sell goods um, along the street. And again, going back to the parks and historical elements in the streetcar, accommodating existing features of the street, um, the street and the built environment along Peachtree Street. It's a very special street. Um, I was talking to somebody earlier. I do most of my work has been around the country. Very rarely have I done a lot of work in Peachtree Street or in Atlanta, even though I live here. And so it's been really exciting to really think about Peachtree Street and what it could be for downtown. So I know that was a lot, and then hopefully we'll get some good feedback. Um, we're going to go into breakout groups. I know Megan and Phil, who's our IT um, person on the call, are helping sort that out. So. I'm assuming you're gonna send us into breakout groups now, Megan? Yep, if we're ready to go, I'll go ahead and push the button. Um, just so everyone knows to expect what to expect. If you haven't been in a breakout group before, um, you will have a little window that pops up on your screen that says you're being sent to breakout group one, two, or three. Um, when you get there, you'll have some of the project team there to help facilitate the, the discussion. Um, and project team members, um, you can unmute people in the breakout groups if they'd like to chat or you're welcome to continue to send your, your comments via the chat box. Um, so we'll have 15 minutes there. You'll get a warning when there are 60 seconds left um, and then we'll all be brought back to the main group. Um, and Phil, who is our IT superstar, will be um, in the main room if anyone needs to head back or has any questions for things like that. So are we ready to go? See you then. <laughs>
Hey there. Um, we are, <laughs> we're just getting some people into breakout rooms. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna go ahead and assign you to, uh, I guess just breakout room one. So feel free to accept that and you can head on that way.
Hey, Mark. Um, everybody's in breakout rooms right now. So if you like, I can throw you into a breakout room. Um, we're, for security purposes, no one can unmute themselves right now. Uh, we had some incidents last week, but I'll go ahead and send you in a breakout room and you can join one of the discussions. There's a few minutes left in each one, but let me assign you to, um, let me assign you to room two here. So see you in a few.
Thank you guys for a great discussion. I can't speak for the other breakout groups, but I really enjoyed all the comments um, that breakout group one, the best one, um, had to share. Um, so we're excited now. I know we started touching on some of the design conversation in that, um, but to delve a little bit deeper into the design. Um, and so with that, I'll let Addy go ahead and get us started. Yeah, can you go to the setting the stage? Yep. Flip it over. And I think we had a robust discussion in group two, so <laughs> we'll be back together soon. Runners up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so setting the stage. So I just wanna just touch base, bring us back to the corridor level and what we're, we're focused on here. Um, at the, the onset of this, this process, we had the corridor divided up into four sections, basically Emory Hospital, Connector Crossing, the Peachtree Center, which you'll see in blue, number three, and the four is Woodruff Park. And I'm looking at the diagram. Um, Yes, thanks, Megan. Um, from that and looking at how do you begin to shed, set up a shared space? So we need to think about the corridor, the number of lanes and how do we get it to a shared space, which is generally just one lane in each direction. And we looked at the current capacity of the street and it's four to five lanes from top to bottom. And if you zoom into the future travel lanes, um, we wanted to take into account the, the, the projects that are coming online, like the Emory Master Plan, um, and just other corridor initiatives through there. So building on the work from the, the existing conditions traffic study where we were looking at you know, where traffic is leaving the corridor and, and that work, we felt three lanes um, but between North Avenue and Pine Street, um, going down to two lanes um, from there because a lot of the traffic is going, getting onto the connector and the two lanes setting up um, when you enter the shared space at uh, West Peachtree Street. From there, it would continue down either to two lanes, and we hope the project would extend further into West Peach, um, into the Woodruff Park piece of the corridor. All right. So let's go over to the Emory Hospital area. Now I'm going to touch really quickly on segment one, two, and four. That's because from the um, public space working group we've heard and from our previous outreach, we heard that um, segment three, the Peachtree Center segment is really where we'd wanna focus our efforts on the, the shared space. Ideally, we would like to see the whole corridor as a shared space, but for starting point, which would be the Peachtree Center. This also will tie into our demonstration project. Some of you were on the call last night for the demonstration project, but it really helps to kind of set this up if this is our first um, foray into a shared space and getting that demonstration project to really reflect that. So when we start at the north, and this again, this is from North Avenue to Pine Street, we're looking at um, two to four or four lanes with parking in either direction. What we want, there you go. <laughs> what we're looking at doing here is one lane in each direction with a dedicated left turn lane. Um, we know there's some bicycle facilities further to the south, so we want to go ahead and um, improve those to the north and also have those separated. And if you can show a little bit of the plan as well further south. So a lot of what we're trying to do with a lot of the corridor is not only, you know, begin to kind of highlight some of the material changes that are going to happen along the corridor and segments one and two are really what can we do within the right of way. So without a big lift, what can we begin to start structuring, restriping before we even have um, some of the material changes, but really setting the position up for the shared space. The second um, area, the connector crossing, we're really looking at this, this section right here is focusing on the, the bridge where we have two vehicular lanes in either direction, a bike lane, a directional bike lane with some buffer, and then the, the sidewalks with um, a more hardened buffer. What we'd like to see in here and throughout from, from north to here is really start to get those nuggets, those Instagrammable moments, those really things that make Atlanta, Atlanta, those authentic pieces that really start drawing people through the space. Um, we believe the bridge has an opportunity to really begin to really set and frame that, that space and creating a, just a, a, a wanting more of Peachtree Street. So one lane in each direction, um, the center turn lane would actually become a planted median and can have some planters through there, providing some buffer um, to the bikes. And also we heard from some of the public space working group members earlier on this week that the the bear the buffer or the barrier between the pedestrians and the bikes um, feels very isolating and um, like you can't get out of it especially in terms of COVID you know getting that distance and how do we open that up to to kind of make that space a little bit more permeable 
um, for those walking along the corridor. And then Megan, I want to go ahead and jump down to Woodruff Park. So the Woodruff Park seg segment is two lanes in each direction. One on, the, on the, the eastern side, of course, we have a lot of the small businesses. On, on the right, we have Woodruff Park. We heard from the community when we asked the question, you know, is Woodruff Park one of the right places for the first shared space out the gate? And while they thought it would make a great shared space, there's a, there was an acknowledgement that there's a lot of work going on in Woodruff Park to date. There's a strategic master plan. There's also programming. And nobody felt it was the, the biggest thing that needed to be taken care of. So we wanted to be reflectful, uh, respectful of that work. Um, and Megan, if you could go over to the proposed section. So again, take, setting up that shared space. So getting the four lanes to two, one lane in each direction. Um, eliminating that knee wall along Woodruff Park. And that is something that they're looking at to really create a more flexible space. And how do you kind of begin to tie that green space with the street space? And really that's what a true uh, shared space is. It's the green space, it's the, the, the travel ways all tying together, but really creating that rhythm of space. And you can kind of just see some program, programmatic elements um, through there. So one of the big things, and Megan, you can go up to the segment three, was we really wanted to start doing is really begin to set a rhythm of the space. So how far are trees separated? Again, what's the materiality along the space? And really what we wanted to create was a canvas so that you can have a flexible space for all users. So whether it's a small event that happens with, as I mentioned earlier, the buskers or the pop-out pop up kiosks or bigger events that they are really flexible and been able to accommodate. Um, part of our work, we will you know, look at the street framework, but the programming and activation to which Andrew um, will be speaking with um, shortly, he's with James Lima Planning and Development, um, we'll be speaking about some of the opportunities that we have along there for programming and activation. So the shared space is really beginning at West Peachtree Street. So Megan, if you could just dive in a little bit there, and it's perfect. So the space that we're looking at, we know that in this area, we have Hardy Ivy Park and you have Suntrust Plaza. Um, we wanted to give more prominence, more visibility to Hardy Ivy Park. So it's really thinking about balancing the street to give some more expansion, expansion and pedestrian comfort to the area along um, Hardy Ivy Park. Um, again, one lane in each direction, still acknowledging um, you have the ability to expand on the eastern side of Peachtree Street, but really, you know, giving that um, additional space to some of our civic infrastructure um, along there. As we move uh, south, um, we wanted to really look at how do you begin to shape Peachtree Street and the views along it. Um, one of the, the issues we felt um, was problematic was street peach tree as a straight shot, um, the gun barrel look, if you will. We've done some research into um, Exhibition Road and what Exhibition Road, which is, if you don't know, if you weren't here earlier and Kevin mentioned it, is it is a shared space um, in the heart of London along a lot of cultural amenities. What they found is after the shared space was implemented in off hours when there wasn't a lot of pedestrians, when there wasn't a lot of activity, um, they got higher vehicle speed. So how do you begin to recognize that and how do you begin to design for it? So one of the, and, and, and not do a complete chicane, which is a complete shift in the road, but actually do a gradual bend that really helps to slow traffic down, um, sets up some great views of the flat iron building and gives um, more space to the pedestrian. Now we showed some parking here. I think the parking discussion along Peachtree Street we can certainly have our intent with parking is to show, you know, those high turnover spaces uh, for loading and unloading or um, 88 perhaps vehicle spaces, but it wouldn't be a consistent thing along the corridor by any means. Um, these are really just, you know, flexible spaces. So, you know, if a restaurant or, or some facility needs that right there, but over time, um, maybe it becomes something else. So there is the ability within this rhythm of space to kind of pull out some of those pockets of uh, loading and unloading through there. By turning that slightly, we get to set up um, the, the real kind of meat in the heart, which is that Peachtree Center. 
Um, for lack of a better word, we're looking at doing a kind of an equitable space on both sides. So we felt that there's so much going on on both sides with loading and unloading. You have America's Mart, you have Peachtree um, Center. You also, this is one of the two places along the corridor that has the highest um, pedestrian volume. So really making sure this space is equitable on both sides. Um, so designing it so that the, the, the vehicle travel movement could actually happen in the middle and um, the curbless um, pedestrian comfort happens on either side, as you can see here. If you wanna continue down. We have um, another shift in the space. I won't get into it um, there, but it happens just south of Andrew Young. Again, setting up that view towards Margaret Mitchell Square and the library. Again, giving a lot of pedestrian expansion area to the east side of the corridor. That is um, the sidewalks. Um, are a little bit tighter on that side. You don't have the, the 191 on, on the other side that has a bigger um, pedestrian plaza. So we felt giving it over um, to the other side of the street felt a little bit better. And finally, the streetcar piece. So we have um, the existing streetcar and we wanted to make sure that we were reflective of that design. We know that a lot of work has gone in there to date and how do we, how are we respectful of that design? So unlike the rest of the corridor, which is curbless, this area would keep the curb in place on the eastern side of the street where the where the streetcar is today. Um, the, the street would kind of slant down to that so we can keep the loading, the stations that are already in place and recognize that. The streetcar would operate in its own, or it's not its own, there, that space is still flexible, but it has its dedicated um, area and, and cars can move adjacent, cars, bikes, and people adjacent to it. Now I know that was a lot um, to cover and um, go into the Grove area a little bit too. And I'm gonna set it up for, for Andrew here, Andrew Jones in a minute. So we talked about the flexibility of the space and there's so many options that we can do with the space. Um, one of the just ideas we had is what if there were like peach, tree, peach trees on Peachtree Street and maybe it's not peach trees, maybe it's something else. And we acknowledge that there's a whole bunch of maintenance and issues that go along with that that could be done through whoever is um, programming and managing the space. But really, you know, is there opportunities to create groves of trees um, along the space that really kind of bring back that, that urban, um, that city in the trees um, aspect of, of, of Atlanta? Um, and not just, you know, a grove and when, where that could happen, but if you kind of go through those other images to the right there. Um, and you can see the planters that could be moved with seating, you know, lighting, are there spaces for technology or co-working spaces outside? Um, we know we have the central library along the corridor and you could, you know, expand that to the outside. One of our community members said, well, why don't you just put this like expanded library by the bus stop? I mean, people are waiting for buses, put the, the library right there. You know, there's just so many elements and creating some fun um, uh, lighting and seating. These are some quiet gardens that could be, that are module that can be moved around and uh, the New York City seesaws, the light seesaws and opportunities for people to plug in um, for concerts and things like that. But I think these are all opportunities and, and Andrew's gonna speak here in just a second to really start to think about um, Peachtree Street as we have a canvas to really paint with on here. So with that, I'm gonna stop talking. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Andrew and Andrew's gonna spend about 10 minutes um, going through some activation strategies for this. And then we're gonna go back into our breakout rooms and we can begin to digest even more of this in a few moments. So Andrew. And Megan, you might oh. need to unmute him. <laughs> Sorry about that, Andrew. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Addy. Uh, appreciate the, uh, the introduction. Um, so yeah, I'm about to run you guys through um, some preliminary programming ideas that uh, my firm, James Lima Planning and Development, has come up with. Um, they're kind of informed by uh, an economic and real estate analysis of the corridor, um, some input that we received from workshop one, 
Um, and then we've been having some kind of brainstorm sessions of local arts, cultural, and community organizations um, who have actually had some fantastic and really exciting ideas um, that I will share with you now. Um, so the first uh, kind of bucket of ideas is about um, activating ground level public and private spaces. So that's carrying um, all the things that are happening uh, on the upper floors and the office towers and some of the things taking place down in the Peachtree Center Mall um, and the MARTA stations um, onto the ground level. So the first idea in this vein is uh, the idea of a Peachtree Center showcase. Um, so it's taking some of these food service businesses that are currently located in that underground mall and providing them with an opportunity um, to kind of temporarily open a, a food stall or a second location, um, either in one of the wider areas of the shared space, um, one of the cap kiosks, um, or setting up some sort of uh, other stall in Harvey Ivy, Hardy Ivy or Woodruff Park. Um, again, this gives them more more visibility to foot traffic, um, gets workers to kind of come outside um, their buildings for lunch and provides passersby with, uh, with high quality vending options. The second um, is actually borrowed from an Invest in Atlanta project that's taking place elsewhere in Atlanta, um, iVillage at MLK, which uh, created a kind of an incubator um, co-working space out of some uh, shipping containers. Um, we think that, again, in the wider areas of the shared space, potentially outside the library, this is an excellent uh, idea. Um, I think that uh, people are more comfortable with working in non-traditional locations uh, post-COVID. Um, and that, this is perfect for a place uh, like Atlanta that has better weather than my hometown of New York. Um, there are organizations like Switchyards Atlanta who can help manage this, and then even uh, Georgia State University, who has a pretty uh, exciting incubator program, uh, could be involved as well. The second bucket of ideas um, is about uh, creating a destination for both locals and tourists. Um, so this is speaking to some of the needs around um, bringing businesses that will uh, bring more Atlantans uh, and then make them you know, enjoy, enjoy the space on a regular basis as well. Um, we're of the belief that uh, public spaces are largely defined by their seating options. Um, so the first idea here is uh, community designed urban perches. And that's essentially a street furniture that um, is designed by the community itself. Uh, so whether that's local students um, or uh, older folks to kind of make this a space that's friendly for uh, people uh, ages eight through 80, um, which is kind of a, a design goal of, of many public spaces these days. Um, we think the M Museum of Design Atlanta um, could be involved in coming up with some of these initial designs and that X Lab at Georgia State could actually help us fabricate some of them. Um, the Youth Design Center in Brooklyn uh, has run a really successful program of this sort uh, up in my neck of the woods. Uh, the second is an idea for kind of a pop-up grocery store. Um, there is not a uh, grocery store in the kind of immediate Peachtree Corridor area. Um, and we've heard that this is actually restraining um, the growth and demand for kind of residential nearby. Um, but it is a bit of a chicken and an egg problem. Uh, a lot of grocery stores will not go to places unless there is a substantial um, residential base. Um, so we're suggesting kind of an interim solution, which is a pop-up grocery store. Um, that can start to kind of temporarily fill some of those needs um, and attract more residents to, to spend time in this corridor. The third bucket um, is to kind of promote civic pride um, and project local identity. Um, so this is really turning a new Peachtree Street um, into a, a platform or a stage where Atlanta's creative community um, can thrive. Um, there was talk in the first workshop about using uh, the space on the roof of the Peachtree Center MARTA building for a variety of things. We think it would make a great uh, performance platform actually for bands um, and there's some ready-made seating uh, right across the way uh, in Margaret Mitchell Square and in the new um, uh, public area outside the library and there are a number of uh, partners who could be involved in this. Um, another idea in this vein is uh, made in Atlanta market stalls. Um, we've learned that Atlanta has a really uh, vast and uh, ever growing uh, community of makers. Um, and we think that they have some place on a new Peachtree Street. Uh, so we think there's an opportunity um, to have either regular or seasonal uh, kind of maker festivals uh, to allow some of these artists to, to kind of get more visibility and make some money off of their work. And the last idea in this bucket is um, a kind of a blank walls program. Um, we found that uh, there are quite a few blank walls uh, along the Peachtree Street corridor um, and responding to some of the concerns related to the lack of color, um, a mural program or even a digital art um, program on some of these walls uh, could make sense. 
Um, in the case of a digital art program, those screens could double as uh, places where you could stream either live theatrical performances from inside the Rialto Center or theatrical outfit, or even a place where people can gather for major sporting events. And then the last kind of bucket here is uh, creating a base of daily users. So as Megan highlighted earlier, um, the residential population is about one eighth of the daytime population. And that daytime population may not come back uh, to full strength um, after COVID um, based on some of the changes that we're seeing and how people work and travel. Um, so we think that it's absolutely imperative that there are more opportunities for people to live uh, along the corridor. Uh, to that end, uh, we think there's maybe a chance to convert some uh, older hotel properties that could be uh, financially hurting from uh, COVID into co-living, um, which is kind of a growing housing option, particularly among uh, millennials and, and Gen Z. Um, with Georgia State just nearby, that is a massive market that a co-living operator may want to tap into. Um, and then secondly, uh, converting some class B and C office space that again is, uh, is less and less utilized um, as people kind of migrate more permanently to, to work from home um, into residential spaces. Um, there's even an office, or excuse me, an apartment building um, on Peachtree Street right now called The Office that I believe has had that trajectory. Um, so just a few things to think about. And then you know, to Addie's point, we are taking any and all suggestions for innovative programming ideas as we kind of continue this engagement period. So anything that you all have in mind, please feel free to, to shoot it my way. Thanks, Andrew. So I know you all have seen a lot um, and I've seen some comments popping up in the chat box, which have been great. We're definitely keeping track of all those, um, but we'd love to head back into our breakout group so that we can hear from you more directly. Um, so we'll be in the same groups as before. Um, we'll have about 15 minutes to discuss and then we'll head back together to wrap up. So I'm gonna go ahead and push the button and send us off to our breakout groups.
and we're back. <laughs> All right. We've got a lot of great feedback. I don't know how uh, Megan and Eric, how your groups went, but I know we got, we certainly got a lot of feedback in our group um, as well. So we understand that was a lot of information to dive through um, today, but we really appreciate you um, being here. And for a lot of folks, I, I know that you guys have been here since Friday. So this has been, and in the previous workshop. So we really, really appreciate it. Um, some of the next steps we have, of course, we have the share Peachtree sketch challenge. I know we have some architects and some planners and some that just do it on the side. And we'd love to, if you have a sketch, an idea, a, a photo that you think would be applicable to this effort, please feel free to share Peachtree at atlantaga.gov or, or, or tag um, the photo as well. We would love to see it. And, and you know, this is, this is the cities, this is the, the people getting the chance to kind of weigh in on what our main street looks like. Um, the most um, physical thing that you'll be seeing is the demonstration project. Um, Tony Garcia from Street Plan mentioned it yesterday. Um, that will be happening um, late April, May timeframe. And that would be something that we will be testing some concepts of a shared space. We can't unfortunately test a full shared space, a curbless street, but what we can test our lane reduction, so taking the four lanes to two lanes, um, expanding um, the pedestrian uh, sidewalks and eliminating some of those barriers. Um, those are things that we can test um, for this effort and the demonstration project. And the demonstration project is flexible, so things aren't working out. It's easy to move, um, rework, look at busing, uh, loading and unloading. As far as, um, um, so that will be happening and then, you know, that can build and be enhanced as well. So building on that um, as a phase two and, and more activity for the demonstration project as we set up for um, the official shared space. Um, just so stay tuned. Um, we have, I think we have everybody's, um, you know, who's registered today's event will be posting um, surveys and getting um, some of these concepts out to everybody. We've been kind of in it for this week. So, um, if we haven't gotten back to you, we will shortly. But again, our website, sharepeachtree.com, that's where you'll be able to find all of our documents and blog posts and things of that nature. So yeah. Megan, do you have any kind of last technical? Um, um, the last thing we've gotten a couple of requests for the recordings. I just wanted to make sure everybody knows that we're working on getting those up and those will be on the website this week. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and send an email out to everyone who's participated um, throughout the week to let you know when they're up there. Great, and Kevin, um, if you're still on, um, any kind of last roundup meetings? Otherwise, we will, um, I know we're right at time and we'll stay around and we can answer any questions in the chat. Yeah, just uh, thank you everybody for uh, being here this evening and really following us along the way. And uh, we look forward to coming back with more. Thanks, Kevin. Okay. Awesome. Well, I will man the chat box for a little longer if anyone has final comments. Um, but feel free to, to get on with your evening um, and we appreciate you being here. Um, let's see. Chloe, well, we, we have oh, yeah we have one more public space working group that meeting that's going to happen in March and I will say that for the folks still on here if people are interested in joining the public space working group that is the intent it started out small as 12 folks it is growing um, I think it's doubled in size and mm -hmm. the hope is that folks who join the working group are really advocates for public space and transforming our streets to something that. Um, really puts people first um, and really looks at our streets in a new well realm, not only downtown, but through Atlanta. And we hope that it continues to grow and have different advocacy um, arms of it as well. Also, thank you all for using the chat box so well. We apologize again about <laughs> the mute settings, um, but this has been super helpful.
Kevin, that might be a, a question for you. Jeff is asking, do you guys do uh, presentations for neighborhoods, associations? Um, I guess Old Fourth Ward, yeah, um, goes up to Peachtree Street. Um, that might be, I mean, we'll, all these events are recorded, so that could be certainly it. And I think, Kevin, I don't know if you need to be unmuted or you can unmute yourself. Oh, I'm unmuted. Speak for, you. <laughs> Speak for the city. Yeah, we could do, um, you know, uh, informational meeting or a presentation at, at neighborhoods or, or the NPUs. Um, if you would just email peachtree at atlantaja.gov so we can make sure our entire team sees those requests and we'll, we'll get with you to uh, look at a good time for doing that. All right, last call for any comments in the chat box. <laughs> okay. Awesome, John, we can, we can connect you about the, the working group as well. And Matthew, I know you joined late. So um, the, all, as Megan mentioned, all these recordings will be online. So um, <laughs> please visit those and um, reach out if you have any questions, we're here to, to help. All right, that I think will officially adjourn. Um, and Monique uh, put the project email address in the chat box. Again, it's peachtree at atlantaga.gov. So you can send any follow up questions to that address. So thank you so much and hope you have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good night. <laughs>